Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the series finale, Alfred Lowenstein. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as directly on the video on Bond. Oh, it's been a long road. I can't Again. believe it. Again. I can't believe it, folks. We're here. We've reached the end. We done it. And if you're wondering why, like, hey, it's the end. Why do these guys not look uh, like they got hit by an emotional freight train? It's because we're going ghoul hunting. That's right. We're still gonna be in the office, baby. We're still gonna be in uh, on the road, in the ghoul van, hunting for ghosts, hanging out with you guys for one last ride. So while this is goodbye for Unsolved True Crime, it is not goodbye for Supernatural. And I'll say this, and I think I'm at liberty to speak now that True Crime is wrapped up. My least favorite. <laughs> You say that all the time, though. I do. We'll be at the I end. like ghost hunting. I think it's fun. But by the end of a ghost there hunting go. season, Here it comes. I'm fed up with ghost hunting. And I'm like, well, now I just want to sit at the desk and talk about murder some more in a respectful way. It's been so long. Almost two years because of the pandemic. Do we still got it? Do we? Oh, I'm we afraid still we're going to get out there. We're going to be rusty. And now we ain't going to be rusty. It's like riding a bike when you're good at what you do. And uh, I think I don't think we need to spit out our resume. What a journey it's been. Yes, we'll miss true crime, but buckle up, because next season of Supernatural, the final season of Supernatural, that's the thing you gotta sob about. Holy shit, Not that's yet. gonna be devastating. It is gonna be devastating, and that's probably when you'll see me melt like a human ice cream cone. Let's answer some questions about true crime. This isn't about the episode in particular, though I hope you enjoyed it. Um, a blast, a hoot. Um, probably not one people were expecting. No, no, I would say that this was definitely on the B sides, but we went ahead and just flipped that bad boy over and turned it into an A side. What was your thought process behind choosing that as the final episode? Was it solely, well, we're gonna have fun with this one? Because we did. I think it was that, and also it kind of was almost like a spiritual successor. Well, it's not a successor, it was a, a dude who actually died, <laughs> but <laughs> it was like- The story. You mean. It was a very similar story to one of our other favorite cases, which is D.B. Cooper. These are all from the YouTube community tab. Um, for the postmortem, what has been either the most interesting or your personal favorite case you have ever covered? Oh. True crime, we're talking just true crime here. Mm. I hate to sound like a broken record here, but Going back to D.B. Cooper has fascinated me. That and the Zodiac. Uh, there, I, don't, I, I know the Zodiac is like, uh, as Shane would say, uh, a music comparison would probably be uh, someone I used to know by Gautier. It's just played over and over again until it's just sure. no longer interesting. Sure. I still like the song and I still like the Zodiac. Um, Are you saying Gautier is the Zodiac killer? No, no, oh, that's not okay. No, that surprised no, no, me. No, um, no, that's probably mine. What is yours? I think I've often cited um, Louis Le Prince as a fun one. Oh, Louis? Which, you know, I guess was a crime because he did disappear, but it's it's sort of um, a whimsical story of, of... I've liked the offbeat ones. Uh, Louis Le Prince, Van Gogh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Um, uh, just because it's it's fun to not be quite so uh, dour all the time. Louis Le Prince was a fun little film man who they, disappeared forever. They disappeared uh, the man who made the movie camera. Let's throw it over to Carla Martinez for the postmortem. What was your personal favorite memories of doing this show? I mean, sure, there was a lot of memories I had doing, like on camera doing the show that were amazing. Like the D.B. Cooper episode was one of the most fun episodes I've ever uh, had the experience of enjoying. What, enjoying? No, that sentence didn't really make sense, but you know what I mean. I, I enjoyed making that episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But a lot of the stuff was off camera. Uh, traveling with the crew becoming a tight-knit little family. When we have done true crime on the road, like we did some in London. Oh, Jack the Ripper. Uh, we did... Uh, Caddy Cabins. Not Ooh, super that, fun. that was not that fun. No, it was fun. We honestly, that one was fun because the trip was such uh, so eventful. For postmortem, this comes from uh, Colin Maholland. Congrats on the street. Congratulations on a great run. If you could know the solution to one case you've covered, which would it be? That's a very good question. I've never been asked that. 
I feel like we've been asked that several times. I don't and think we've we have. also answered it several times. I don't think so. Because I remember saying, I'd love to know who killed JFK. You're right. And I, would, I think right. I've also cited Area 51 He's right. as like, well, sure, yeah. If out of all these, would I like to know who shot someone in the head with a bullet? Or would I like to know if extraterrestrials exist? That's true. I'm both, going Area 51. Both well, both. I guess, is that supernatural, though? That's more supernatural. Shit! Jesus. JFK. JFK, huh? Sure. I'd love to know. Or would it be Zodiac for you? <sighs> yeah, Zodiac. Also, it feels selfish for me to want to know where that damn treasure was hidden. Right. Uh, because, you know. Well, it's also somebody found it. So, and I know you have your doubts, but. No, I don't have any doubts. Oh man, it's gotta be either the Zodiac or D.B. Cooper. Just because before I did this show, those were two cases I actually were, I was obsessed with. Well, Summerton Man's also pretty juicy. That's you know, true. It's so enigmatic. It's like, what's going on there? I feel like, I, I hate to be basic, but I gotta say Zodiac, man. I'll go JFK. I think it's all out there for us, but I wanna know every last detail of it. For postmortem, is this the last time we'll ever see Ricky Gold? Oh, I shouldn't ask this question. Uh, I'm getting tired of seeing that name. And every time I do that, I seem to almost like, kind of like- Why don't we ask it? Why don't we look at a different question here? Um, um, Mabow Bow, that was from Emotional Punching Bag, by the way. Thank you for that. We're not gonna answer that one, though. Um, for, what? You, uh, we're gonna just move to another question here. This is from Mabao Bao. What's the most important thing you've learned throughout the entire show? Who are you mocking me just over talk, here? Talk, Come talk, on now. Talk, 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 that's all you ever do. Well, we're on postmortem. We answer questions here. That's what we do. That is, what I the hell is postmortem? This is the, that's BuzzFeed on postmortem. It's where we answer our questions for the, um... Why is your head so big? Well, you don't have to get rude about it. <laughs> Ryan, come on. We've been doing this show for a long time. I'm you know, just I'm busting your one. balls, big guy. And I think you know who Ryan is, or was. <laughs> oh, oh gosh, how did I not do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, was it because? Don't worry. It's because the last here, question was about here, Ricky. I'll throw your little pal back. One, two. Oh, God. Ryan, Ryan. Come to the light. Come to the light, Ryan. Yeah, it seems like I always like tell it. See, I don't even know how the fuck I got to this position. It's what's not the, funny anymore. What's the most important thing you've learned throughout the show? Wait, what? That's the question at hand. I'm really debating if I want to be honest here because it, I think it is a useful piece of information, but if I've learned- Where are we going with this? What are you talking about? If I've learned one thing from studying all these cases, it's that. <laughs> what? Are you, are you giving people murder tips? <laughs> no, I'm oh. just saying that if, you were the first to stumble upon a crime scene. You were really in a bad spot. Like, oh, sure. That is not a good place to be because you call it in, you're gonna be the first suspect. That's just, that's just it. No matter what, you are going to be a suspect. And that sucks because you're a good Samaritan. And I've seen it in every one of these cases, including some of the oldest ones like Jack the Ripper. That guy was a prime suspect for calling in a murder. Of course I'd call it in if I found something. But I would have to say, look, I know how this goes. I know you're gonna suspect me, but I'm telling you, I was just taking a walk because I've had a stressful day on Zoom. That's your big takeaway from true crime. Don't call, don't report dead bodies. Well, that's not the takeaway. Oh. Do it, but give them a bit of context of why you're calling it in. Also, don't be so calm when you call it in. <laughs> I think my takeaway, and this is, I'm, I promise I'm not pandering to, to a lot of the things that I've said on this show is just be skeptical of the, the fucking establishment, man. That is we've, true. We've, we've you know discussed a lot of cases where police and uh, people who should be seeking truth. The authorities in charge. Are happy to fucking brush, sorry for all the swears, but it's strange. Sorry for the swears, what? <laughs> What do you think we're on Pee Wee's just, Playhouse? Sometimes I drop a fucking that feels really unnecessary. That feels gratuitous? It feels yeah. great, it felt gratuitous. You yeah. know, this isn't Pulp Fiction over here. People are more than happy to look the other way. That's all I'm saying. You slip them a, slip them a few bucks and it seems like that's all it takes in this book. <laughs> wait, so you're, wait, let me just get this straight. No, so my, our takeaways my, my are- My lesson here isn't, I know that sounded like <laughs> yeah, me saying- It sounds like hey, our takeaways worry. are, don't call in a dead body hey, and bribe, bribe somebody, the police. You'll get away with something. What I'm saying is, I don't think you can rely on institutions like that to, to out truth. 
I just think it sucks that people who do something good are suspected. And I don't know what the takeaway of there is. Yeah. That just sucks. Mark, who's been with us on every one of these episodes, just in a rather soft fashion, said with dead eyes, you can get away with murder. I guess that is the biggest takeaway. He's wearing a mask, but I think he smiled after he said that. Mark, why are you putting plastic down behind the camera? What are you doing hey, hey, do, what is, What's with the booties? Hey, what's going are you on? always wearing those leather gloves? Oh, God. We've reached the end here. <laughs> of uh, this part. Of this part. Now, as I said before, I, mean, I, I, I said it at the beginning, I'm saying it now, and I'll say it at the end again. But there's going to be another season of BuzzFeed Unsolved, Supernatural, so fret not, this is not goodbye yet. If it was, my face would look a lot different, trust me. But seeing as it is the end of BuzzFeed Unsolved True Crime, we do have something very special for you guys. So ahead of this episode, we called in a bunch of fans of the show and gave them a special screening of the last episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which you have also seen. They do not know that we are filming post-mortem right now. They're actually on Zoom, on a computer next door. They have no idea that the computer is going to be taken in here and they're gonna be in this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved post-mortem. Gullible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm really excited. It's cool to be able to interact with at least some of you guys, given all the support that you've given us um, throughout all these years. There's, there's no way we would be able to do this show without you, and I'm not saying that lightly. Without further ado, I hope you guys could enjoy this last little segment where we surprise some fans of the show. And showtime! What did you think of the final episode of Unsolved? It was definitely a banger. Good. I feel like the the pilot Mickey Mouse, I don't know. I'm t I'm so hung up on that, but more than anything, I'm pretty impressed by like how seemingly spot on Shane's like alien blaster impression was. The big question is, what did we think actually happened? I mean, we got we got it. We're all here together. We have to solve the case, too. Alien. I mean, you heard them. Alien. Aliens. It's alien. Yeah. <laughs> they signed it. He got sucked in the toilet. For sure. So if you could share a message with Brian and Shane, uh, what would you say to them? Thank you, because uh, just seeing how much heart and soul you guys put into each and every episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved is great. And as someone who wants to go into creating media and entertainment, uh, it just is really inspiring seeing how far you guys have gone with this series and now with Watcher and everything. And I definitely look up to you guys a lot. You did great, man. It, this show is definitely unlike any other true crime, any other supernatural show out there just y'all bring such uniqueness to this to this media it's been great it's been very funny um as someone who is like kind of part-time uh first responder can that stuff on a daily basis kind of sucks and you just you're bringing laughs to it which is awesome and one day shane will probably believe in ghosts and that's all i hope for thank you uh, so much for the content that you create. Uh, it's always such a joy to watch the banter between you two every week. Uh, I started watching Buzz to be Unsolved when I was a sophomore in high school, and now I'm a rising senior in college. So I just, I can't believe how much time has passed. I'm a huge fan. I love you both. As well as, I know Ryan, you are looking for a new hat because I know Shane's kind of up in you that. So I brought this. I thought, you know, it might be a nice detective hat to end the year off on. Just think about it. Maybe get yourself one of these. That'd be great. But I love you both. Thank you so much for the memories. Thank you. I have so much love for you guys and what you do. And it's very inspiring as somebody who um, wants to create and is creating and wants to continue that. I was always told just to go back to what or watching something that brings me joy and stuff. And I kind of forgot like what brought me joy until like I started rewatching all the episodes. And I don't know, it's just really heavy for me. And I appreciate like you guys so much. So thank you. You guys are some of the funniest people I've ever seen in my entire life. And the hard work and dedication you put in is amazing. And I just want to say thank you so much. I'm actually going to pass it off to Lizzie. Uh, just because I know she is actually at the studio and she'll be able to show you guys around. Thank you for all coming on. This is uh, the stage we shoot at, stage eight. This is the 
know, area. We come in here after every uh, every episode release to do all of the postmortems and stuff. And um, sorry, hold on. Um, sorry, we're filming. Oh, sorry, guys. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> He's oh, snagged. Oh, man. Hello? <laughs> hey. Oh, boy. What's going on, guys? <laughs> we done snagged a Filter Vergara over. No way. Someone pass me an inhaler. <laughs> I got to commend you all for jumping onto the Zoom call, watching an episode, answering a bunch of questions about us, and not getting absolutely livid that we wouldn't even bother to show up for a Zoom call. Because I would have quit. Yeah. I'm out of here. You would have stormed out. It was amazing listening to like what you guys thought of the episode and and uh, yeah, hearing everything you guys said that, about what the show means to you guys, it, that's a, it was incredible to hear. So, um, you know, I think sometimes you get, uh, you get lost in making something. You get so like tunnel vision um, that you don't, you know, really remember, um, you know, the impact it could have. So to hear all of that uh, really meant a lot to me. Especially because we've all been trapped in our homes for, uh, you know, uh, 18 months. Usually we're out on the streets. People come up to us and say, I love the ghost hunts, and we say, oh heck, we know, but yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I tell you what, it's not always fun to be walking around dusty old rooms and, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, sitting in the dark, but uh, seeing you all here and like just knowing that, uh, that it brings that much joy to people, I mean, it's, it's a, also a thrill for us to be able to, to, to to essentially hang out with you guys in your living room. Oh, now that we've talked about our feelings, is there anything you guys want to know? Anything you guys want to talk about? Did you ever crush that apple, Shane? N uh, no, I didn't. No. But, um, <laughs> funny so. how that works out. I yeah. think I knew, but I just wanted to hear you say it. Um, so sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> there's, there's, ladies, yeah. there's people picking up cars to save babies, and I can't do that either. So you know. Did you ever ask your dad if he like um, accidentally? chop someone's head off as a dentist? It definitely was fodder for a couple awkward Thanksgiving dinners, but he never really gave me a straight answer, so. My dad's um, a dentist too, so. Oh, oh so he is? also a murderer. Oh, so he's I all, think... well, they're like, dentists are like basically the real life version of the John Wick spy agency. I've forgotten everything I've wanted to say that I've been uh, That's Ryan, I'm Shane, uh, <laughs> we, we gotta. <laughs> I thought you'd just forgotten uh, every detail of, of the show. <laughs> wow. My question to you, Shane, is that uh, what was your favorite place to see Ryan be scared at? Like, he was just <laughs> crying on the floor and you were like, this is hilarious. They're all very funny. I think I have an idea um, of which Oh, you know what? Do you have a guess? Because I'm curious what you think. I'm, I would guess Old City Jail. That's not the one. Really? You seem to really revel Asylum? in that. No, it is Penn. Oh, um, Penhurst Asylum. Was it Penhurst? Penhurst Asylum. Penhurst. When we did, that was the first time we did individual That was the first time we did individual, yeah. individual walkthroughs, which yeah. I, I, and I could be wrong about this, but I remember I kept pushing for those. I was like, we really should be alone yeah. at some point. No, he definitely was pushing for that because I wouldn't shut up. When we'd be in like the scariest place of a, of a location because I was scared, so I wanted to fill the silence. He also lost his mind at Old City Jail, but that Penhurst really was especially fun because it was a, the top floor of a place. And, and that place was also my first solo investigation. And I remember like walking around because we had our headphones on with the thing and you just like, everything is uh, amplified. Yes. And it's, it's almost like a spacewalk almost. But I remember like, I was also legitimately, I wasn't like scared of ghosts, but I was like, well, my heart rate's elevated right now. Cause it's just, <laughs> It's spooky to walk around, and you know, after I did it like three or four more times, I don't know, it wears off pretty quickly. By the end of it, I'm like, you know, we're fine here. You sound like an AI. Like that's how Shane an AI mind, would describe mind. being scared. Oh, my heart rate is elevated My right heart now. rate is elevated. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, that was fun. It was, it was really fun, because Ryan, uh, you know, he had gotten, I think, a little comfortable at that point with just ghost hunting, and then to cast him off you know, on his own was especially uh, very, very funny. Um, wow. 
I'm glad. Yeah. I think. And that place was particularly creepy. No, it was. That entire, it was like an entire floor of the place. So I, it wasn't even like, go in this room by yourself. Well, if we, if we would have just done that entire building with just me, I probably would have lost my mind. You'd be then. dead. He'd be but a like, dead. Because in Old City Jail, my mind exploded into like 10 different horcruxes that are still there, yeah. I think. I think there's, there's bits of Ryan's soul all over America. <laughs> Let's go to Caitlin. Will there still be a revival of the hot dog in the works in the future? I would love nothing more, but as it is uh, a lot of the people at BuzzFeed who worked on it, it was this weird passion project um, from me, Ryan especially, and um, like a lot of the people in post-production who would, you know, they kind of got carried away with it. They, I think, encouraged me to do it more than I ever wanted to. That's not true. That is true. That is not true. I saw you sitting over the shoulders of the editors with this like glee on your face. Going like like this, literally like I an mean, evil supervillain. But they designed, I don't know, because I work with, Mike Fox was one of the guys in post who was who really loved it. And he does uh, puppet history now. Um, and he loved it so much. You look, when I saw you over there, because BuzzFeed used to be laid out in a way where I could see the editors and I could see Shane walking over there and I could see them looking at the screen. I knew what they were editing. Shane looked at the screen with like the reverence of like, like he had footage of the, the original moon landing. Well, yeah, he was just brilliant. sitting there with like a super villain glee. And yeah. I was like, wow, he's looking at animations of a <laughs> fucking hot dog right now. Uh, I wouldn't say it's out of the question. It'll, yeah. it'll probably be a bit if I do it though. Caitlin, let's, <laughs> let, let's, let's cut the crap here. How much did he pay you to ask that question? <laughs> did he Venmo you? He, like, come on, let us know. I wanted to ask if you had any tips on like getting into the industry and stuff. Two things. Number one is, at, at the very least, just create. Um, don't overthink things. R right now you're at the stage where you can't really make any mistakes, even if you are making mistakes. <laughs> even if you think what you're making is not particularly good, you're still gonna learn something just by, the, the, by virtue of having done a rep. And, and then the second thing I usually say is um, to be malleable. Uh, and what I mean by that <laughs> is don't have such a clear cut vision of of what your your career or your life or what your work is supposed to be because when you get that set in stone and that hard-headed, you don't allow some of the things that may be serving you to come in the door. Make stuff that that you want to make. Uh, don't try to make stuff for other people. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I One question would probably be, do you ever plan on finishing the night at the Sally House? Or, like go back to finish? Because that was like your one time. Ah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we can get them there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did. I, I kind of swore I would never go back. Also, the thing is, I screamed at Sally or whatever the hell lives in that house, and said some pretty uncool things. I feel like to that, that to whatever's there. I don't think I could show my face there again. I'm kind of scared. I actually also promised uh, my well, not my girlfriend, but my fiance now um, that I I wouldn't go. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I don't think I will. I don't think I will. That leaves the door open for someone to write a, a great fan fiction about it. And like, maybe I conquer the house or something. Like <laughs> yeah, I have one question. So from like the eight seasons, what's like one topic you wish you could have covered, like in the true crime or the supernatural? I always wanted to do like an international like yeah. Loch Ness Monster or even like Champlain. They got a uh, champ up there. Um, but it would be a fairly boring episode. Like, as much as we all love the Mothman episode, um, that's us walking around town eating cookies and then <laughs> walking into the woods for what feels in the episode like about 10 minutes. If we ever did a Loch Ness or a, a Champ, you know, I guess we'd just be standing on the shore being like, hey Nessie! And yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't be much to that unless we could like uh, charter a submarine. That'd be sick, uh, charter a submarine? Right, that's what I'm saying. That would oh, be man. great, but I don't think that's uh, within our, our, our budget. You'd already be one step ahead because you were already dressed up like Life Aquatic of Steve Zissou. Oh, here we go, <laughs> here we go. But for true crime, I feel pretty I feel pretty resolved in terms of, huh, I feel pretty solved in terms of my feelings when it comes to true crime. There's not really any other cases that I wish I could have covered, but for Supernatural, there are certainly some like tent pole locations that I wish we could have done, like uh, Alcatraz, I wish, which, which by the way, it was just so expensive to go there, so that's why we couldn't. And then that's usually the reason why we can't go to some places. It's 
money or it's uh, they just straight up don't want us there. Like they don't, they want to get past ghosts or they don't particularly like us. <laughs> um, but uh, Alcatraz, I've always wanted to go to, to investigate, like truly investigate the Stanley, um, the Conjuring house would have been fucking incredible. Oh yeah. Um, that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Uh, I guess you don't have an episode to watch next week because this is the series finale. That's it. That's a wrap on true crime, folks. Holy moly. Thank you all for oh my being God. here with us. And we'll see everybody. Get your boots on. Because we're going hunting. That's true. We're hitting that dusty, dusty ghost trail right after this. This is not the last you'll see of us. We'll be back in the office cracking open those manila folders. It's going to be a good time, but... You know what? Let's just take a let's just pause for a moment here and really take in the the ending of true crime okay. BuzzFeed Unsolved. Like imagine a well, little candle. So? Oh, oh okay. Little candle. Everybody join us with this. Yeah, imagine, very sincere. imagine a little candle and and then slowly like a, a breeze comes through the room, perhaps the ghost of the upcoming season, and it just gets extinguished. Wait, I'll make the noise of the, the extinguishing. Whew! Okay, you ruined it. Thank you to all of our special guests. You guys are great, and you helped us finish this thing off right. So, uh, thank you. Well, we'll That's see you that. later. That's that.